Today my guest is Joe Conk. Joe, how are you doing, sir? Good. Good to be here. Um, you, it's been a couple of weeks since that build conference, Windows mm -hmm. build conference, and uh, we've had some time to absorb what was released there. A lot of stuff on Windows 8. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get your take on that. What's, okay. uh, what's going on with Sure, that? sure. Well, the build conference actually had quite a bit of material for developers, uh, and, and they released the developer preview of Windows 8, so you can actually download the Windows 8 and try it out on your own machines. Um, and the Windows 8 essentially is going to have two new modes, or it's going to have two modes. There's the desktop mode, which is the Windows 7 mode, very much like what we're accustomed to today. So I think that, of that as the classic Windows Yeah, mode. they call it the desktop mode, yeah. so it's the, it's the classic, right? right. And w with some exceptions, that's virtually unchanged from Windows 7. So anything you can do today as a developer, you can pretty much do there, you know, under Windows 8. Uh, the mode that got a lot of attention was the Windows Metro mode. So there's the, the Metro mode is very, very much like the Windows 7 phone with the tile, live tiles and, and the scrollable interface. It's a very touch-based interface. Mm -hmm. and, and really what Microsoft is trying to do with that um, release of Windows 8 is they're trying to come up with a single operating system that will extend all the way from the smallest device to the largest device. So, whereas the uh, Apple uh, technology has two separate operating systems, yeah. one for the desktop and one for the mobile devices, Microsoft is essentially trying to trump that by having one that spans that entire space. I see. So, uh, so those, the, the content it builds is available. We can go view it and see what Correct. tools are available. Correct. But um, I'm interested more in what does it actually mean to us as developers, particularly given that Microsoft has kind of gone dark on this. They're not saying anything. They gave their message of build, and now they're being quiet, I'm stepping back. Right. Let us talk about it. Right. I mean, it's not surprising. Windows 8 does mean there'll be some changes for developers if you want to target that new environment. Um, so again, if you're, if you're targeting the desktop mode, it's essentially no change. If you're targeting the new Metro mode of that live tiles, uh, touch interface, then of course there will be a lot of changes. And the Windows Metro mode uh, is based on a uh, WinRT runtime. WinRT is what? RT literally means runtime. Oh, okay. So uh, in, in Windows desktop environment, you have Win32 as your base API underneath all of the .NET. Okay. Uh, in WinRT, there's a brand new base that talks to the kernel, and that's the WinRT. Oh, so okay. under Metro, Win32 is essentially no longer there. I see. So it's just a different, a new API for dealing correct. with this, uh, Correct. Correct. Uh, and, and so that and that that WinRT uh, interf platform provides many of the same services that Win32 used to, you know, access to the devices and whatever. But it's more, it's it's really oriented towards mobile development. So there are restrictions. You can't just walk the entire file system anymore, and things like that, uh, under the WinRT uh, mode. Mm -hmm. So the intent is to uh, force developers to build highly responsive and very safe applications, okay. uh, much like you want to have on a phone. Sure. I mean, that trend started with Windows 7 as well. Those things that used to be kind of guidelines, and now their rules are actually enforced. Right. Windows I mean, Silverlight's always run in the sandbox, and, and the Metro applications will run in the sandbox as well. All right. So, um, so for developers, I mean, what what are we going to do here? Um, like you said, you said if I'm going to target the um, the desktop mm -hmm. types of applications, I've got nothing to worry about. I really don't have to learn. Right. All your existing thing. skills will still. But apply. If I want to target Metro, let me mm -hmm. ask you this first of all: what uh, what kind of applications are appropriate for this Metro interface? Well, the, the Metro application, is, is it really is kind of more of a, a mobile-type uh, approach to an application. So if I'm building apps for a phone or for a tablet? Phone or a tablet, tablet really is probably the primary target for that. Although the advantage is if, you do, if your application can fit into that form factor, uh -huh. then it still runs fine on the desktop under Windows 8. Uh -huh. So you've got phone plus desktop if you target the Metro interface. Okay. What about some of the tools that I need to know about? Well, in uh, Windows 8, um, you still can have uh, C Sharp and maybe the traditional .NET languages uh, with some restrictions. And you then have a heavy emphasis on two different GUIs. You can build your GUI for Metro in two different ways. You can do the C Sharp and VB with a XAML uh, uh, user interface. Okay, so that'd be a lot like building WPF or Silverlight. Very much like, interfaces. yeah, your, your Silverlight and WPF skills will transfer very well into that space. Okay. Um, and then, on top of the same WinRT, you also can have the uh, um, HTML5 and, and uh, JavaScript. So you JavaScript, in, in uh, Windows 8, JavaScript becomes a first-class language. You can write pure JavaScript applications that have HTML interfaces that call into the Win32 and can interact with the Win32, or I'm sorry, can interact with the WinRT uh, runtime 
and you can build a C sharp or VB based WinRT classes that then can be consumed by JavaScript. That's a that's an interesting thing. There's a big paradigm that shift. Mm -hmm. uh, when I build HTML applications mm -hmm. and JavaScript applications, mm -hmm. those are always running inside a browser. Right. right. And you're saying they don't. That's no longer true. Now they're still going to run inside the browser, but now we can have them running just like a WPF application. Right. As part of Windows, calling out to uh, the things that WPF. Right, right. And, and that was one of the things that was a little bit confusing about the, the, the build was that there was a lot of talk about the new HTML5 and the new JavaScript in Windows 8 and what they were referring to were Windows applications. They were not referring to browser-based applications. Right. So understand that the HTML5 and uh, JavaScript are now Windows application tools. Interesting. Uh, why would I choose JavaScript? which um, maybe I'm wrong here, but my perception is that JavaScript is not as powerful a language as C-sharp. Why would I choose that as a development environment? Well, I mean, powerful has many meanings, but it's true that, that the C-sharp being a strongly typed language or VB being a strongly typed language with a full runtime behind it uh, certainly can be a, a more powerful environment. Um, I think the, the reason why you might choose the uh, HTML5, HTML5 JavaScript application for a Windows application is if you have existing uh, websites or existing code that's already built in that, it, it makes it an easier transfer into the Windows oh, okay. environment. So you want that kind of cross-platform? Correct. Yeah. Uh, Cross-hosting. Right. I mean, you, you, you really couldn't build a native desktop application in JavaScript before, and now you can with Windows 8. So it, it gives you additional reach for that for that for those skill sets. Is it, um, put yourself in the shoes of the developer that doesn't, isn't strong in HTML5, mm -hmm. isn't strong in XAML. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the more important technology? Where should he spend, be spending his time to prepare for the next couple of years? Well, I, I think the, the question, the answer to that is you know, pretty obvious. It should be the HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, because that does still work you know, very well on web servers and on web pages. And so it's, you, you have a far greater uh, reach as a developer with those technologies. Because you know, with the Windows 8, it's still a Windows device. You know, it, it, so if you write a Metro application, you are still targeting only Windows applications. It's not going to run. Metro is not going to run on a Macintosh. I see. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. It's very exciting. Joe Kong, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank Great you. Great conversation. Technology and friends, we just finished a great day here at the Ann Arbor Day of .net, learning wonderful technologies um, uh, surrounded by many, many friends. Uh, hope you enjoy your user group experience too.